Hi, I'm Courtney from Creative Bug, and I'm going to talk to you all about the different kinds of tapes that you can use for art and craft projects. A lot of this knowledge is just gleaned from two decades of playing with tape and seeing what works and what doesn't, sometimes the hard way. And we're going to talk about what kind of tapes to use for what kind of project and what's appropriate. Let's just start with our average, well-known household scotch tape. You can find this at the craft store, at your office supply store or even at a place like Walgreens or the drugstore. And it comes in a clear variety, it can come in a frosted variety, which is maybe what you're familiar with for gift wrap. And I have an assortment of things that we can just tape down and we can see what we like and what we don't. You've all seen this kind of tape and you can use it to tape any kind of paper to paper object, but it is slightly frosted and it becomes visible and that may not be what you wanna use for your project. So I prefer to use a double-sided tape. So let's take this off. For just basic paper to paper, putting together a card, or maybe taping down a photo like this into a sketchbook or a photo album, I actually really like a permanent double-sided tape. So it's sticky adhesive on both sides of the tape. You can find this at the office supply store and it comes in permanent or removable. And I love the permanent, it's quick and easy to use. When you're using all these household tapes like scotch tape and masking tape and you're worried about archivability, you do want to check the packaging or the labels to see if they're pH neutral or sometimes they'll say acid free. Most things now are made that way. It used to be more of an issue a few years ago, but if you're unsure, check the package because it usually will tell you photo safe even is something that you can look for. Masking tape you're probably familiar with. This is just in the back of everybody's junk drawer and it is a paper tape. And you'll notice that if you have a roll sitting around for a while that it tends to get brittle and it can either become stickier and hard to use or completely not sticky. So the longevity of this is questionable, but it works great for just quick paper to paper. And something that I found really useful is if you go to the art supply store, you can actually find black masking tape and natural masking tape in all these widths. So you can kind of play with the size and actually use this to make line drawings on the wall or on a window. It's not artist tape, so it's just masking tape. It's also pH neutral in most cases, and it's really inexpensive to play around with. Let me show you what just a little bit of black masking tape looks like. So this will definitely hold for paper to paper, but what's nice about these various widths is it's more unexpected, so you can use it more like a design element, and it'll still hold. You can play with the natural kind or the black kind. If it's actual masking tape, it's only gonna come in these two colors. And this can be fun to layer, but it also works just for holding paper to paper. It also works for cardstock to paper. The next step is something like artist tape or painter's tape. So these are lower tack tapes. Artist tape is also removable. It's something that you might wanna use if you're working with like a painting or a drawing and you wanna tack down something temporarily. You can then remove it without damaging the surface. You wanna check the packaging because they'll usually say removable up to two weeks. It's not for permanent adhesion. This is obviously something that you're familiar with from painting a room. You can place this down on paper and then it's removable without tearing. Artist tape is also removable. It's something that you might wanna use if you're working with like a painting that you've made on paper or you're tracing a template and you're working on a fine paper like a watercolor paper and you wanna tack down something temporarily, you can then remove it without damaging the surface. That's what you would use artist tape for. Again, it comes in different widths and colors. It's a little more expensive than a masking tape. If you don't have artist tape or painter's tape, you can use masking tape and I have a couple tricks for making it a little less tacky. You can tear off a piece of it and there are two tricks. If you're using something like a really tiny piece, you can actually put it on your arm and the oils from your skin will just kind of reduce the tackiness. If you're working with a larger strip, you can also just put it on your jeans or your clothes and it'll pick up the finest bit of lint and make it less sticky. That'll make it removable and easy to work with. A step up from there is packing tape. So this is a highly tacky tape, it's transparent. It's two inches wide, that's the standard. It doesn't come in other widths. This would be overkill on just a paper to paper project. Unless you're essentially laminating the front of something like a postcard, you could use a ton of strips of packing tape. You can embed something in this because it's clear. So let's say I had this little shape of a feather. Depending on what kind of effect I want, I could completely cover this in the packing tape. 
but packing tape could look really cool if you really wanted to laminate the surface of something and embed like a lot of little tiny objects like confetti or glitter, then packing tape could be a great application for that. But this is a very particular look. You're gonna get a very glossy surface and this is a highly tacky tape. This is not removable. And the longevity of it and its pH neutral quality is questionable. By the same token, duct tape is something that you probably have all used. It has a plasticky surface and then it has these little threads running through it that allow you, you'll notice when you tear it, that it tears straight. That's because of the thread. So there's a grain to the tape, much like fabric because of these threads. That's why when you tear it, it tears on grain. You can use this to make a lot of projects like wallets or purses or clutches or something like that. But this is a super heavy duty tape. So you really have to think about where it's appropriate. Again, not necessarily for paper to paper unless you're wanting to add this little pop of metallic, but there's some better ways to do that. It's a pretty chunky tape for paper crafting. Super tape is something that I discovered at the craft store. It usually comes in this sort of red color and it's a highly sticky double-sided tape. You're not gonna be able to tear this one. You're gonna have to cut it with your scissors. And this would be overkill for just paper to paper, but it would be great for something like cardstock to cardstock or even cardboard to cardboard. It's a very tacky tape. You place it down on one surface and then you remove this red backing. So it is clear or transparent. And this guy is cardstock. I can use it just like a double-sided tape. And it's just so sticky that if I wanted to peek under something like in a sketchbook or a notebook or a scrapbook, this is the kind of tape to use. This is gonna last and hold at this top seam forever and then you could still pick up without tearing away your photo. Because the super tape is so sticky, you can actually get glitter to stick to it and it makes really beautiful, very clean glitter lines if you wanna use with glitter. Something similar to that is a glue dot. You may be familiar with something like glue dots. It's similar to the adhesive that comes on the back of your credit card when you get it in the mail, but it's much more sticky. They come in different sizes, and it's a really stretchable, very tacky little dot of adhesive. And you don't actually wanna to touch it. What I would recommend doing is just tearing away your glue dot and kiss it to whatever you're going to attach it to. So if I'm using it for paper to paper, I would tear off a dot, leaving that waxy sort of paper backing, kiss it to one side of the paper, remove that paper backing, and then attach my other item. This is great for something more three-dimensional like a button or a little tiny key. So I can kiss the glue dot to the back of the button, remove that paper backing, and then attach this down. And if I press, I mean, this is on here. Those glue dots stick immediately and they're really highly tacky. They're not removable. And they come in all different sizes. They're also great for making little glitter dots if you wanna add something to your spread here. And now one of my most favorites is washi tape. This has really gained a lot of popularity. I'm personally obsessed with this. And it is a paper tape, much like a masking tape. It's slightly transparent, which means that you can layer. And they come in patterns and colors and different widths. This is awesome for paper to paper. And generally just if you wanna spruce up anything, washi tape is your go-to. Now it's not super sticky. So you wouldn't want to attach anything really heavy duty, like you couldn't tape down a button and let it stay. It would, it would be too light for that. But because of that, it's pretty removable and you can draw on your walls with it, on your windows. You could put it on a plate for just a quick pop of color. So I might use my washi tape to tape down something like a photo. And you can play with layering colors. So I've got a gold one down and then if I wanted to add some pink, you can tear or cut this. I like to tear it, I like the torn edge look. You can see how nicely that layers. I can see the gold pattern coming through my neon pink and you can really play with that. I've got this little solid band of jade in a thinner width and again, I can layer this on top and you can see how these start to play with each other. This is great for paper to paper. If it's staying on a card and a sketchbook, this will last you, but it's not permanent if you were to use it on like a wall or a non-porous surface like a dish or a plate or a window. This is floral tape and it's not gonna work like your traditional tape. It's not immediately sticky. You couldn't place it on paper. It's stretchy and in between these little fibers, which you can't necessarily really see, when I stretch the tape, it activates the wax that's saturating the entire tape. And still, it's not that sticky to stick to something like paper, but it does stick to itself. I have a floral wire 
And traditionally, floral tape is used in floral crafts. I actually use it a lot for making paper flowers. And I'm going to show you how to just wrap this wire using the floral tape. Now, when you're wrapping something like a stick or a wire, you're going to want to hold your tape at an angle. You don't want to wrap just perfectly perpendicular because you'll just get a circle of tape and you won't ever wind your way down the stem. So you want to hold it at an angle. And you're just going to stretch and pull. And you'll see that it sticks to itself. If you do this for an evening, your index and thumb fingers will start to get a little waxy and tacky with the wax that's in the floral tape. And you can tear it. You can also cut it. And it really sticks to itself. This isn't going to come undone. If I were working on a project, like in a sketchbook or maybe putting together a card, there are different tapes that I like for certain types of things that I want to stick together. The super tape, for example, I think is an excellent use here because I want to have movement. But if I just wanted to stick this down, super tape is a little bit of an overkill. This is a really heavy duty, awesome tape, but it's not necessary for just an easy, quick paper to paper adhesion. I would probably use my permanent double sided tape. Again, if I were doing something chunky and non-porous, and what I mean by that is paper is porous, it takes on water, it takes on glue really nicely. For something like the buttons or a wooden object or even something metal like a key, the glue dot is going to be the best adhesive for that. I had my little paper leaf that I completely laminated in my packing tape, but let's say I want to have a little bit more movement. These guys are folded in the center. I could just use my double-sided tape, apply it to one side, and I actually do want to trim that because it's sticking out. You can cut this very easily. And that's going to give me permanent adhesion on one side and then I can still have this little flap so I could write something in here or just if I want to add some texture. If I was working in something like a shadow box and had a really chunky item, I would go back to my glue dots. But anything paper to paper, double-sided tape, if you want it to be invisible, is perfect. But if you want to add a little pop of color or add some design, something like the masking tape or the washi tape is really ideal. And you can even use this as a design element on its own by adding just a stripe of color somewhere. It doesn't actually even have to be tacking anything down. You can just simply use it as a way to add color to a project. Something like a really lightweight paper. This is an origami paper. This works great with just my double-sided tape. Or if I want something that's visible, I could go back to using my masking tape and play with the widths. Because it's just a strip, it has a very graphic quality. And you can play with that as a way to add layers in projects. That's our tour of tape. A lot of these things you might already have or they might be something that you've seen in the craft store. I encourage you to just experiment. See what you like playing with and what works best for the mediums you're using. My favorite might be the washi tape, but maybe you'll have another favorite.